<clears throat> Greetings. It is uh, January 2nd, 2018. I'm going to read the text of a letter to the editor I had, t I had written, uh, submitted to, and which was published in the late JT News Voice of Jewish Washington newspaper in Seattle, commonly known as the Jewish Transcript. The uh, letter was published uh, April 29th, 2005, entitled, as you see here, A Pope Not So Popular by Akiva Kenny Segan. Regarding Josh Basson's letter of praise for the late Pope John Paul II, letters April 15th, while Carol Wojtyla deserves posthumous praise for doing more to promote Catholic-Jewish relations than any of his predecessors, his tenure regarding Jewry was marked by one step back for everyone forward. Two beatifications during his tenure resulted in enormously strained Jewish-Catholic relations. Edith Stein, who converted to Catholicism as an adult, was murdered as a Jew at Auschwitz. According to the Catholic website St. Anthony Messenger, she was canonized as St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, confessor and martyr. There was also the recent uproar over the beatification of Sister Anne Emmerich, a 19th century mystic nun most highly regarded by some and reviled by others as the source of inspiration for Mel Gibson's movie The Passion of the Christ. The movie is regarded by, as anti-Semitic by many Jews and has its detractors among many Catholics. Among the latter is Father John Pavlikovsky, a scholar at Catholic Theological Union who has been a tireless campaigner towards improved Catholic-Jewish relations. John Paul's refusal to open the Vatican's World War II era archives to scholars, Jewish and Christian and alike, continues as a gaping wound in improved Catholic-Jewish relations. But as the Pope's oratory of support for the world's impoverished poor on one hand and his actions of support on behalf of the powerful oligarchical families and military governments which ran countries like Nicaragua, Guatemala, and El Salvador that shows us the greatest failure of this Pope's moral and ethical leadership. John Paul turned his back on priests who advocated liberation theology and who worked tirelessly on behalf of millions of poor and destitute peasants and workers and their families in Central and South America. He directed the repression of those priests. While he spoke passionately of the need for the world's powers to assist the global poor, his actions spoke louder than words. His policies result, results, should be resulted in the murder of scores of priests and nuns and the massacre of hundreds of thousands of impoverished peoples, including Indians by the right-wing military regimes, their armies, and their death squads. His papacy was directly responsible in supporting those regimes which used war crimes against humanity to enforce their power and suppression of the quest for basic human rights for their citizens. Kiva K. Segan, Seattle. And then a, a postscript all these years later. I'm very pleased myself as a non-Catholic, as an observer, and someone who uh, does a lot of uh, interfaith dialogue and guest teaching about the Holocaust and human rights and conflict resolution and so on, both with my art and in schools, colleges, universities, and other places, um, that the current pontiff pope is uh, pursuing a much more human rights focused papacy, for which I extend my personal thanks. There you have it. Thank you.